بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدى هدى نبينا المصطفى الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار As you've heard during these days, the blessed days of the Hijjah, and Imam Bukhari rahimahullah has collected for us the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he told this community, مَا مِنْ أَيَامِ الْعَمْلُ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَامِ فَقَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا رجل خرج بماله ونفسه ثم لم يرجع من ذلك بشيء. He said that these days that we are in right now, the first ten days of the Hijjah, they are the best days, and the person does not do any deeds in these days except that those deeds are more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. So these are the days in which. Any ibadah from the ibadat that we do, Allah loves it more than that ibadah being done on any other day. The companions being a group of people who were intelligent, and they wanted to know more about their religion, they asked about the serious issue of al-jihad. So we can't avoid it, it's going to always stare us in the face. We cannot escape that jihad is from our religion. This is a jihad that's done in the correct mode in the correct fashion. Knowing the level of jihad, they said, Ya Rasulullah, you mean to tell us if, an, if a man performed jihad outside of these 10 days, that the deeds he does in these 10 days are better than his jihad in the month of Ramadan, and the sacred month of Rajab, and the month of Allah, the Prophet called Muharram, Shahrullah Muharram. It's a sacred month. You mean to tell me if a man makes jihad in the sacred month of Muharram, that the one who comes to listen to a lesson in these 10 days, this deed is better than making jihad in Ramadan. The one who reads the Quran in these days, these 10 days, the 10 days of the Hijjah, is better than him making jihad in the month of Muharram and so forth and so on. He say, yes, the deeds that you do in these 10 days are better than making jihad fi sabirillah at any other time of the year, with the exception of the individual who went out to make jihad and he lost his life, making the ultimate sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I preface my talk and my discussion tonight, inshallah, reminding you and myself of this hadith, and reminding us all of the importance of trying to incre increase in the ibadat that have been legislated during these days. And from them is to increase in the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr of Allah. So the Prophet وسلم, told us in the hadith about these 10 days فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ During these days, say a lot, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Alhamdulillah. It's from the dhikr of Allah. And what we're doing right now is also from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we've come together to rehearse and to study something from one of the great imams of al-Islam, one of the guiding posts and the ulama of the religion. He's been given a special place and a special manzila in the eyes and the hearts of the Muslims who are the uqala, the ones who have intellect and the ones who have fairness and justice. And he is no other than the Imam, as he's been described by Al Imam al Dhahabi, who wrote about his biography in the book Sira Alam al Nubala, and he said that he is Al Imam Faqihun Milla, Alam al Iraq. He is the Imam, the Imam, the leader. 
and he is the juris of this ummah, of the milla of al-Islam. He is the mufti, the faqih, and he is the scholar of al-Iraq. His kunya is Abu Hanifa, the father of Hanifa, and his name is al-Nu'man ibn Thabit, and he was born in al-Kufa, our Kufa, that right now is being subjugated to a lot of trials and tribulations by those people who don't have rahmah upon Bani Adam, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. May Allah Ta'ala help the Muslims of Al-Iraq. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa was born in the 80th year after the hijra of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after 80 years, after the hijra, there were a number of companions who were still living during that time. What is authentic and what has been established is that Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, he saw Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, the khadam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and one of the six companions who narrated the majority of the hadith. He saw Anas ibn Malik, but it is not authentic that Al Imam Abu Hanifa narrated any hadith from Anas ibn Malik, nor did he narrate any hadith from any of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. This is a scholastic issue, and if the Muslims just held on to being just, having insaf and adil, we'll be okay. Let's not go overboard in the affairs. So the people who love Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, and they go overboard, they insist that he met and he took from the companions, and that's kithib, and that's a khata. But when you look at the issue and you research the issue and you look what the ulama of Al-Islam, who are in the middle, what they said, it's clear that he never met or he never took and narrated any hadith from any companion, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, but he did see Anas ibn Malik, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with him. In terms of the early life of Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, I'm not here to deal with all of the details of what he did, where he ate, where he drank, where he went to get knowledge about all of the books that he wrote. I want to deal with some of what I perceive as the pertinent issues that should be tackled and that should be expressed in an audience like this. So I'm not going to get deep into how his life was in terms of all of the things that he did and everything that's written about him. And Imam Abu Hanifa, he didn't start off getting knowledge at an early age. That was due to a number of factors. He started off and he was a teenager. During that time, many of the people, they used to start getting knowledge when they were five, six, seven, eight, very young. That wasn't the case with Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. One of the main reasons for that is because it was a time of fitna. It was a time when there was oppression from the leaders of the Muslims. He was in Al-Iraq, in Kufa specifically. That's where he met Anas ibn Malik, when Anas ibn Malik went to Kufa. And the leader over Kufa during that time, the governor was Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi Al-Hajjaj was responsible for killing some of the companions. He's not a companion. He was the saif, the sword of the dole of the Muslims. He was under the leadership of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan and Al-Walid. So because of the oppression that was going on, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, his parents really didn't put him in the way of getting knowledge until after the death of these people. Walid died in the year 95, and Al-Hajjaj died in the year 96. Al-Imam Abu Hanif was 15, 16 at that time. When they were off of the scene, Sulaiman Abdul Malik came, and he had more fairness, and he had more justice. And he started to look at the ulama and respect the ulama. And he started to once again put the knowledge up and put the ulama back in the position where they deserve to be, in the place that they occupy in the society of Islam, in the minds and the hearts of the intelligent Muslims who their fitrah hasn't been contaminated and corrupted. And Imam Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, came during this time. So the seas had been set.